What is the mortar in Clash Royale? A win condition? A defensive building? A siege card? Well, yes. The Mortar is a relatively simple card respectively earning its common rarity status, yet it has many functions. It has a lot of range and health for a 4 elixir building, but it has the slowest hit speed in the game, taking 5 seconds between hits. It's commonly used as a win condition because it can reach an opponent's princess tower if placed near the bridge. Over the years, the cards received 11 balance changes and an evolution. So today, we're going to be covering the entire history of this card, observe the decks it's worked well in, and explain why Supercell balanced this card the way that they did. The Mourner's been in Clash Royale since beta launch, which makes it one of the original 42. But it wasn't 4 Elixir like it would be for most of its lifetime. It was actually 6 Elixir. This was compensated by its stats, however. During this time, the Mortar had a range of 13 tiles, meaning you could play it on the third tile from the bridge and it would still connect to the opponent's princess tower, meaning you could completely block it with the defensive building while it was taking down the tower. It also dealt close to double the damage the current Mortar deals. Its function was practically identical to the Expo, which was another 6 Elixir Siege building. However, while the Mortar had the slowest hit speed in the game, the Expo had the fastest, but dealt far less damage. Comparing both cards' DPS, they were about exactly the same, and had about the same health. Knowing all this, how would a player decide whether to use Mortar or Expo given the assumption that the levels were equal? Well, for one big benefit, the lifetime of Mortar was a full minute compared to the Expo's 40 seconds, so even though they dealt about the same damage per second, Mortar had more seconds to deal damage. With the damage being nearly double per shot and the lifetime being double what it is today, this essentially means an unanswered Mortar in January 2016 would do four times the amount of damage to towers than an unanswered Mortar in January 2024. Fun fact about this, a level 1 mortar in beta did more total damage unanswered than a level 15 one does today. Each of these cards had one more unique factor that solidified their own niches. The Expo was designed to be a better defensive building, while Mortar was geared to be more offensive. To ferment this, the Expo was given the ability to attack air troops, and the Mortar was given a Dead Zone. A Dead Zone is a unique attribute of which no other card in Clash Royale has ever had. What is a Dead Zone, you may ask? You see, for ranged cards, there's only a maximum range. So if a card has a 7 tile range, it can attack a card that's anywhere from 0 to 7 tiles from it. But if a troop got too close to the mortar, it would stop attacking it and lock onto the next closest thing in its range. This was a huge deal, because it forced defenders to distract the card by keeping something in a very specific range. In most scenarios, you'd want your melee troops to get as close as they could to your opponent's ranged cards, because that's where they have the advantage. But when you were defending a mortar, you had to be more strategic. This was the biggest difference between the expo and the mortar. Even though the mortar was 6 elixir, it was incredible incredibly powerful. As a result of this, it was actually nerfed so quickly that I don't have any stat from this time to look at. There was a balance change on January 11th, 2016, only one week after beta launch. I rarely ever talk about this set of balance changes because only four cards were involved. The Mortar was apparently so problematic that it required immediate attention. Its first change ever would be lowering its lifetime from 60 seconds to 40, so its unanswered damage output was more similar to the Expos. It was a pretty massive nerf but it was arguably justified. A 20 second reduction meant 4 less shots. If we look at the earliest that I could find, which was on January 17th, 2016, it shows that Mortar was only being used by one of the top 100 ladder players, which is especially bad considering how few cards there were at the time. But Supercell was nowhere near finished balancing it yet though. Remember, I said this card's gotten 11 total balance changes, and 7 of those were in 2016 alone, and 6 of those 7 were in the first 6 months of 2016, so not even a month after its first change would it receive another. On February 2nd, 2016, the Mortar would get a huge rework. It was just too similar to the Expo, so its elixir cost was reduced to 4, balanced out by a damage nerf of 40%, its lifetime being cut in half, and a one tile range reduction. Now I always emphasize how even one elixir can make a huge difference when it comes to card costs, so a cost reduction of two certainly requires some major stat reductions, but even this was a bit overboard, especially for a card that wasn't too good to begin with. 
Following this rework, the mortars rates did not change. So just one week after that rework, it would receive 10 seconds of lifetime back. But that wouldn't even be the last change the card received that month. On February 29th, it would get another positive change. This would be the third change in just a single month, mind you. It was changed so that it would no longer stop its attack if its target died during the attack animation. You see, before this update, cards wouldn't carry out their attack if the opposing troop died, which was bad for splash cards because even though its main target died, that attack could have helped deal with surrounding troops. This change certainly didn't fully fix that problem, but it helped. Thanks to these buffs, the card's popularity was steadily growing. By the end of March, it climbed up to a 6% use rate, but in April, it would get much worse. I don't have an exact stat for April, but anyone who was playing around this time knows that Mortar's popularity was skyrocketing. It felt like it was appearing all the time. Over the month of April, the strategies surrounding this card developed so much that most people could pick it up and have success with ease, especially because the card was only a common and easy to level up. The strategies were pretty barbaric to the eyes of a modern player though. Decks like this were the Mortar's main go-to. Just decks with multiple buildings and multiple spells so that the Mortar player never had to really cross the bridge. Barbarians were also universally popular at this time and were often seen in Mortar decks to act as a blockade between the defending troops and the mortar. Cycling to your mortar quickly was a big strategy so that your opponent could never keep up with their main counters, and the fact that the deploy time was only 3 seconds gave the defender very little reaction time. You really didn't want a mortar to lock onto your tower because once it did, it was very hard to get off. Although the mortar decks that people used were a bit all over the place, the ice wizard was often paired with the card. Slowing down the enemy troops alone was enough to let the card get a few extra tower hits if it locked on. It was really tough to play against, and players were getting fed up. Just not losing against Mortar was a challenge, but winning against a Mortar deck seemed impossible. Even if you could survive against the barrage of spells and Mortars, breaking through multiple defensive buildings your opponent would have with the Mortar to get to their tower was unthinkable. The Mortar's playstyle was so naturally defensive that it very often led to draws. This was the opposite kind of playstyle Supercell wanted to promote, so it was no surprise that the first balance change in May would put an end to this. On May 3rd, 2016, the Mortar's deploy time would be increased from 3 seconds to 5 seconds. This exact deployment time increase was a nerf given to the Expo a few months earlier. Playing against siege buildings was just stressful because you had to react so quickly, so a deployment time increase is what a lot of players wanted to see. To take extra caution though, due to all the hate the card was getting, the Mortar's damage would also get nerfed by 10%. But this change isn't as bad as you might think when you look at the full context. You see, before this update, the tournament levels were capped at level 8 for common cards while the max level was only 12. Level 13 for commons was being added in the same update and the tournament level cap was being raised to 9, while remaining the same for epic and legendary cards. This essentially meant that all common cards were getting buffed in tournament play or max levels since higher levels mean better stats. An upgrade will give a card about 10% more damage and health, so to offset part of this advantage, the 10% damage bonus the mortar would be getting just by being a common was cancelled out. After these changes went live, the mortar quickly disappeared from the meta. Supercell went too harsh with the nerfs, and thus it was arguably in the worst state it's been in yet. Not even a single person was using it in top ladder anymore. So the following month, on June 21st, 2016, the mortar's deploy time was decreased from 5 seconds to 4 seconds. 3 seconds was way too fast, but 5 seconds was an eternity, so Supercell was meeting in the middle. But this still wasn't really enough to entice anyone to use it. Taking a look at the stat from July 7th, 2016, 16 days after after this change went live, still not even a single top ladder player was using it. The card was receiving so many balance changes in such a short time frame, so it was time to give it a break. As the months went by, Mortar's use rate continued to hover around 0-1%. to It clearly needed some more help, but given the hate this card had received, Supercell needed a fresh idea on how to change it to make it healthy. One popular suggestion was to rework it to 5 Elixir, because 4 Elixir was way too easy to cycle for a siege building. But I don't think Supercell wanted to go that route because they feared making it more expensive would force them to make it too similar to the Expo. Also to note here that the Expo had lost its ability to attack air by now, which made it more similar 
similar to Mortar by that factor. Nearly six months would go by before Supercell attempted to bounce the Mortar again, and they would change a stat they had yet to change. On December 15, 2016, the Mortar splash radius would increase from 1.8 tiles to 2 tiles. This was a really minor change, but it would help the card hit more troops in a swarm or to splash onto the tower even if the troop it was targeting was a little farther from the tower than it needed to be before. Also remember, the Mortar could be used as a defense. It had a lot of health for a 4 elixir card, so it worked well in some scenarios, but it was a pretty lousy one because faster troops would often run out of the area where the mortar was targeting before the mortar's attack could even land. This meant it was especially bad against things like Goblin Hut. Making cards more defensive is not a route Supercell typically goes because they like to promote offensive gameplay, but mortar wasn't fun to play against when it was good and too offensive. Ultimately though, this buff made no difference. Mortar was still rarely ever used on top ladder after this change. Through most of 2017, the mortar had subpar rates but it definitely wasn't considered to be a useless card by any stretch. There wasn't much happening with the Mortar in early 2017. If Mortar was played, it was typically in cycle decks, but none of them were that popular until around March where you started to see the rise of this Mortar Rocket Cycle deck, a deck whose playstyle encouraged the player to cycle their Mortar as fast as possible to keep the opponent on their toes, chipping the tower slowly until it's slow enough to cycle a few rockets to finish it off. It wouldn't be until August 11th, 2017 for the Mortar to appear in the balance changes yet again. The deploy time was being changed again from 4 seconds to 3.5 seconds. This seems like a risky stat to change because the ability to lock onto the tower so fast is what a lot of players hated about the card, but giving the opponent a whole 4 seconds to get a counter down was just too much time to allow the Mortar to be competitively viable. Supercell was once again meeting in the middle to see if they could allow the Mortar to thrive without being too annoying. The card was in 6% of the top 200 finishing ladder decks for the August 2017 season, which was slightly below average, but showed that it could be useful in the right hands. The decks you saw it in now were mostly minor and hog rider decks. Mortar was really only played in specific variations like these, but thrived well in them. At this time, the Mortar was treated primarily as a secondary win condition. A secondary win condition is a card used as a means of destroying towers should the primary win condition be proving ineffective versus the opponent's deck, or or it could be a card that's used to expedite or support the primary win condition's attempts to destroy a tower. Relying on the mortar as a primary win condition was risky due to how difficult it was to make it connect to the opponent's tower, so having that backup hog rider to throw at the bridge when the mortar won't connect was a lifesaver. Supercell was now letting the card settle into the meta, but just when things were starting to get better for the card, they accidentally made it much worse. On October 9th, 2017, Supercell released the Epic Quests update. Often with updates, there are unintentional changes Supercell didn't realize until the update launched. And a big change was coming to the Mortar in this one. It was given a bug where if the card locked onto a target whose hitbox was both inside and outside its dead zone, it wouldn't shoot anything, becoming absolutely useless until that troop moved or died. This meant pretty much any ground ranged troop could fully counter the Mortar unscathed. Cards that usually weren't effective at dealing with Mortar one-on-one -on -one, like Spear Goblins were now decent counters. This wasn't a card killing bug since the placement was very specific and you really always had to support the Mortar anyway, but it was frustrating for Mortar players because their opponent had an advantage they weren't supposed to have. This bug was made apparent very quickly, but unfortunately it wasn't something that could be fixed without another client update, so this bug was in the game for over two months. Despite the bug, Mortar Rocket Cycle was as popular as ever. It wouldn't be until December 12, 2017 until the Mortar bug was fixed. Unfortunately for players who used this deck, the Rocket was also nerfed in this same update. But this didn't stop long-term players of the deck from using it. Going into 2018, you continued to see a lot of Miner, Hog, and Rocket with Mortar. Although the top ladder use rates were still nothing crazy, it was appearing a lot in lower ladder ranges due to its easy accessibility which led to many players demanding a nerf. But even if it did have average usage, it still had that lingering problem of drawing out games. Historically, siege decks involving Mortar and Expo were infamous for how defensive they were, and this specific Mortar deck was infamous for being one of the, if not the most defensive deck in Clash Royale history. It had a higher draw rate than the infamous Expo 2.9 deck. 
Looking at a statistic from March 2018, Expo 2.9 had about a 12% draw rate while the mortar rocket one was at 18%. With a win rate of 53%, the user would only lose an average of 29% of their matches, which is insanely low. This number should always be around 50%. If you weren't frustrated at how often it drew out games at this time though, you probably hated Mortar for its dead zone. A lot of people thought it was just too big. It felt like even if you had troops to defend the Mortar, it just ignored them so often and connected to the tower anyway. Because of all this, a lot of players wanted to see some kind of nerf to the Mortar. On January 24th, 2018, Supercell would deliver on the community's cries for another Mortar nerf. Its minimum range would be decreased from four and a half tiles to three and a half. This was a harsh nerf, but one I think many appreciated because it was one of the main frustrations. And I guess technically you could call this a rework since a shorter minimum range means it will stay locked on troops for slightly longer, which is what you would probably want if you were using it strictly for defense. This nerf hurt the card, but it wasn't out of the meta. In fact, it was still seeing some pretty major developments. By now, you were seeing the newly buffed Skeleton Barrel paired with the Mortar in some decks, but in the February 2018 season, Hog Mortar was by far the most popular variant you would see. It was the only Mortar deck to make the top deck list for top ladder finishing decks, yet it was the second most used deck in the entire game, making 19 appearances out of 200 if you included both variations. But that didn't mean that Mortar Miner and Mortar Rocket weren't still seen frequently. At this point, regardless of what mortar deck you saw, you would almost always see them paired with swarm bait cards. Things like goblins and minion hordes paired very well to protect the mortar efficiently. So finally, after countless changes, it seemed to be in a near perfect position. And in May 2018, the mortar meta would see another massive development. This was thanks to one new card release, the Rascals. The Rascals were comparable to a Knight Archer's combo. The Rascal Boy would spawn in front of the girls, acting as a knight protecting them. The Rascal Girls were very similar to Archer's, but dealt more damage and were fragile enough to be fully taken out by a log. This made them an excellent bait card, and they just so happened to work very well in Mortar decks. It pushed Mortar over the edge from being a decent card to a pretty strong card. This makes sense considering the most popular mortar deck in 2017 utilized the Knight Archers combo. There doesn't appear to be any record of use rates from around this time unfortunately, so we could only speculate exactly how much it helped. The best stat I have is from two days before the Rascals were generally released, where the only way to get them was to get 12 wins in a special challenge or buy them with gems. So, Rascals were available to play technically, but most players had yet to unlock them at the time of this stat being taken. Rascals and Mortar Bait in general continued to be very popular in June, with the Rascals inclusion drastically increasing the popularity of Mortar Bait decks as a whole, normal Mortar Cycle decks were increasingly rare. The Rascals were just too strong during this time and clearly needed a nerf. And on July 2nd, 2018, they would receive one. But what shocked many players was the fact that the Mortar would also receive a nerf in the same set of balance changes. Thanks to its recently increased popularity, Supercell was toning down its damage by 3.5%, as well as its health by 4%. Mortar players were not happy with these nerfs because they believed that Mortar was not the issue, but rather the swarms that were always paired with it. Now, this Mortar nerf didn't really change any interactions, but it still got some pushback from the community. The Mortar was considered to be a fairly balanced card until the Rascals were released, so to many players, nerfing them was enough. But one could argue that since the Rascals were likely going to continue to support the Mortar even after the nerf, a haircut was justified going forward even if it meant hurting the card in non-Rascal related decks. I really want to emphasize how small this nerf was though. 3.5% was only an 8 damage difference at tournament standard. It would still take exactly 12 shots to fully take out a tower by itself. Mortar was still perfectly viable after the changes went live. However, it didn't really have a widespread appeal to casual players anymore due to the higher skill floor it took to succeed with it now. I should also quickly note that Princes were popular in 2018, so later in the year you did see a popular Mortar Prince bait deck rise up. These were the kinds of decks Supercell more so wanted to see because they didn't lead to draws as much. But to be fair, drawing as a whole was much less common by this point because overtime got lengthened from 1 minute to 3 minutes on ladder. With draws being less common now, the hate for Mortar was dying down. The use rate was still a bit lower than average as it's almost always been, but it was still overall in a decent position. 
This was the last balance change that the Mortar would receive for a long time. There weren't really any major developments in 2019. You were still mostly seeing it being used in minor swarm bait decks. However, the Barbarian Barrel gained a lot of prominence, so you started to see that card pair with the Mortar quite often in the first half of 2019. But there were definitely some dry periods throughout the year. In April 2019, for example, its use rate dropped to only 1%. It picked up around the summer, but then dropped to 1% again later in the year. I don't really think anyone would have considered the Mortar to be a dead card at any point in 2019 though. Things started to pick up at the very end of the year though when this Mortar deck with Valkyrie and Musketeer started trending. This was really the first non-bait swarm meta Mortar deck in over a year. This deck alone helped bring Mortar's use rate back up a tad bit. Still below average use rates, but the win rate was excellent, showing those who did take the time to master the archetype were in a good place. I really don't think use rate is the best metric to measure how good the mortar is because I think players just didn't find it to be a fun card to play. This is because it usually required a lot of patience and was very slow paced compared to other archetypes. This viewpoint is supported well by the fact that throughout 2020, the win rate of Mortar remained exceptionally high, exceeding the 45-55% to win rate Supercell aimed for. In fact, in June 2020, it had the highest win rate in the game. If more people were using the Mortar at this win rate, I'm sure it would have been nerfed very quickly. Around August 2020, Mortar with Skeleton Barrel started to make a decent comeback. In September, it even peaked at the number 2 most popular deck in the game, right behind Hog 2.6. So despite some brief downfalls, the Mortar was doing pretty well. It was definitely doing better in 2020 than 2019, and this momentum continued through 2021. By now, you were just seeing so much more variety with the Mortar. An IceWiz Rocket NATO variant was popular by the end of the year, and this was motivated by the December 2021 balance changes, which gave a nice buff to the Ice Wizard. From the end of October to December, the Mortar's use rate rose from 2 to 7%, the highest it's been since 2018 according to records. Given its very high win rate, arguing for a nerf at this point may not have been a ridiculous idea. It had been over three years since the card's last change by this point, but at the same time, it would be pretty impulsive to nerf a card with barely above average rates for a month, especially for a card that had been considered average to slightly below average for years without being changed. The meta needed to settle. But as the meta kept developing, the mortar seemed to only be getting better. The meta had some major shifts when champions were introduced, which seemed to overall benefit the Mortar. Around January 2022, you started to see Mortar paired with the new Skeleton King champion a lot. This seemed like an obvious pairing if you think about it. Mortar is often paired with Swarm cards, and the Skeleton King's ability is charged by units dying, which happens a lot when you have a lot of troops on the battlefield. Despite these developments, Mortar's use rate did dip a bit in 2022, but when you did see it, it would very often be paired with the Skeleton King. But that wasn't the only champion you would see it with throughout the year. The Mighty Miner also came out in April 2022 and would eventually become a common pairing. The Mighty Miner received a lot of balance changes throughout 2022, so it wasn't consistently viable, but when it was, it was another avenue for Mortar to shine. And although it wasn't as popular as the Mighty Miner and Skeleton King variants, you would occasionally see the Archer Queen paired with the Mortar as well. These champions brought Mortar back in a big way. And by the second half of 2022, it was being used in competitive play a lot. It was very commonly seen with one of these champions, but some of the more traditional decks were still viable and being used. CRL 2022 was in September and Mortar made a lot of appearances. In fact, a Mortar Archer Queen deck was used in the final match of the grand finals of this event to win the entire tournament. I think CRL 2022 was the tipping point that made Supercell decide that a small nerf to the Mortar was in order, because only a couple of weeks after the tournament ended, the Mortar would receive a nerf for the first time in over 4 years, and this would be the final balance change that the card has ever received to this day. On October 4th, 2022, the Mortar's hit points were reduced by 7%. Supercell simply stated that the Mortar had been rising in popularity thanks to the Skeleton King specifically. But even after this nerf, the card was still fairly popular. 
For the rest of 2022, the Phoenix and Mighty Miner were meta-defining at different points, and the Mortar was able to adapt well with the rise of both cards. By the end of the year, you were almost exclusively seeing the Mortar in Mighty Miner decks, which helped it reach an impressive 8% use rate while maintaining the highest win rate in the game. This specific Hog Mighty Miner Mortar deck was in and out of the meta for over 6 months, remaining as one of the, if not the most popular Mortar deck. With the exception of February to March, due to the archers getting a big buff, naturally leading to high archer usage. Mortar had another surge of popularity with the archers rise, which led to the creation of several variations. As you can see from the decks I just showed you, the miner was also extremely popular in this meta, which was great for the mortar. You even saw a small comeback of the infamous 2017 mortar rocket cycle deck. It was peaking around 10% usage until the inevitable miner and archer nerfs but even then, it was still able to adapt just fine. Okay, now even though there are no more balance changes to cover in regards to the Mortar, there's still one major development we have to go over, the Mortar's evolution. Evolutions were introduced in June 2023, and the Mortar's evolution would arrive not long after in early July. It was supposed to be released at the start of the July season, but it was technically available for about the last hour of the June season, which actually resulted in one player finishing in the top 10 with it for the June 2023 season. This evolution would require you to play a regular mortar twice to access it, but once you were able to get it, you would be able to place a special mortar that hit 25% faster while having 20% more hit points, with the added bonus of each projectile spawning a goblin upon impact. It was sort of reminiscent of that 2016 April Fool's client where the mortar shot goblin barrels. This was interesting in a balancing sense because it now meant that any change to the goblin troop was going to directly affect the mortar. The goblin troop has yet to receive a balance change since the mortar evolution's implementation though. Now, this evolution certainly made the mortar better. There was no downside in using this compared to the normal mortar. However, the other evolutions were just far more broken and appealing than the mortar's was. So even with these extra buffs, this new and improved mortar still had about average rates because you could only use one evolution per deck. Over the next few months, as the newness factor wore off and more evolutions were added, the mortar evolution would slowly paint in popularity, eventually becoming the least popular one. And by this point, even the mortar's rates without the evolution were horribly low. As of January 2024, the mortar evolution is the only evolution that's never been involved in a balance change, except for the Valkyries, but that one was just added as of the month of this video. Since that low stat I showed you, it's risen a bit because of other evolution nerfs and the assistance of the Little Prince. All meanwhile, the evolutionless mortar remains in the dust. I'm curious to see where Supercell takes this card in the future. It's been well over a year since its last change and has been relying heavily on its evolution to stay viable. The meta's been changing so rapidly with evolutions and tower troops over the last few months, meaning I feel like I can't judge what a good balance change would be right now, so I probably wouldn't change the mortar right now if I had the choice. But let me know what you think about it. Should Supercell change the evolved mortar, regular mortar, or just leave it alone? There's a lot of cards in this game, and I think plenty of them should take priority priority over the mortar. I think 2024 is going to be a very interesting year for Clash Royale history, and as the future becomes history, I'll have more work to do. Thank you all for listening, and I'll catch you later.